I've been on a quest looking for printers that have a larger print area. We're talking about greater than 400 millimeters, and that's because our business is continuing to evolve and we need to print larger items, larger than this. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max, which has a print bed of 420 by 420 and a height of 500 millimeters. It's big, it's this big. So we're gonna take a look at the printer from a farm perspective, because I'm looking to incorporate this into our farm. Can it generate the quality that I need for my customers? And is it capable of printing at a level that is going to give us the type of edge that we need? Let's get right to it. Now, before going through the actual printer specs, I wanted to share with you kind of like what we're trying to solve. We run a 3D print farm and have the need to print larger and larger prints. So having a printer that has a large bed is really important to us. The larger, the better. But more importantly, or equally important, it's not just how large the bed is, it's also the kind of quality that you get from it. Now, we primarily print PLA, and we'll do maybe some ASA, no PETG, however, it's rare when we do it. And this printer being open the way it is and given kind of like the, the temperature of the area that our printer's work in, probably wouldn't be doing well with PETG or any of those other type of materials. But on the PLA side and on the ASA side, I can get away with it and it does a really nice job. There are a lot of prints that we went through in testing this and I want to share with you some of the prints that we did first and then we'll go over the specs and I'll give you my opinions about the printer and what works really well and what are the things that I'd like to see improve. So first of all, large. It is large. It is large. So this is kind of like one of our uh, prints that we would use for a, a UV printer. And I needed something that was going to be really large that could print those uh, large prints. And this definitely can do it. Can it print big? It absolutely can. Let me show you some of the things that we did. Now, before going through the business stuff, I've always get asked, hey, can it do fun things? So this was printed on the printer. And this... <laughs> It, again, Halloween is coming around the corner. I needed something that my wife wanted um, in our four years when people came in. And this is a ghost that can have a tea light inside and you can put um, something to drink here. You can put, you know, Pepsi, Coke, whichever Sprite. Uh, and if you're one of those Mountain Dew people, you can do Mountain Dew as well. Uh, needless to say, the quality came out really nice. This is using just some standard uh, Polymaker uh, PLA. Um, everything that we print typically is gonna be Polymaker uh, filament in our farm and that's kind of like what we use when we do our testing and this was just their standard white. I uh, really really like the quality and how well this turned out. Now in addition to that we did test out 3D or the actual multicolor. We uh, we don't do a lot of multicolor outside of maybe um, some certain badges and branding. And I wanted to show you here is a print. Uh, we printed this out before and I thought this was a good model just to test out and this is again using uh, some potty maker PLA uh, a black and then a green. We didn't do extensive tuning on the actual filament. Uh, we wanted to see how well it would print just out of the box. And you'll see uh, some of the things I'd like to, to, to see uh, improved, which would require some tuning. As you'll notice here that it's a, I have some shiny areas which have to do with speed and temperature, but that I'll have to adjust so I can have equal, uh, equal finish. We don't really do a lot of ironing. We choose not to. We want the print to come out without having to go through uh, ironing experience uh, because that also over time, depending on how much wear you have on your print head, that affects the quality of ironing. So we don't do any ironing, but there's opportunities here, as you can see from how it's shiny. Let's see right there. You can see how it's shiny here and not here. There's some opportunities to fix that. Uh, the first layer on the printer, Every single print, we were really happy with the first layer, and I'm gonna show you a first layer test that we did as well. We actually ran two benchies because now uh, that they come on there, uh, there's a, a faster benchy and a slower benchy. This is the uh, fastest benchy that they have, and that benchy did really well. You can see for a bed of this size, it, it performed as we expected it to. We had a good first layer, and then everything else seems to do well. The arches, the overhangs, everything was nice. Uh, there isn't a lot of detail in the back of the boat, but that is what I would have expected. There's also a slower benchy, takes twice the amount of time, and this is what the slower benchy uh, look like. And frankly, I can't really tell much of a difference between the high speed benchy and the low speed benchy. Right? They did both equally well, in my opinion, and I came out with very similar quality. I'd say probably what I noticed about the fast one is that it's a little bit more shinier. 
same filament. One is a little bit more shinier than the other. See this one right here. And that was the only thing I really noticed. Uh, so consistent quality. Now we print many things. Uh, a lot of them are, are functional parts. Uh, some of them are gonna be used for uh, accessories and things of that nature. And I wanted to, to just see how the uh, multicolor material uh, prints would work out because we do have their, their multi-material um, solution and you can see that in a couple seconds. But we went ahead and this was inside of the, uh, the actual USB or on memory. Uh, it's, a, it's a bottle opener and we just went with two colors. We primarily print in gray and black and one other color, white. Uh, but this is what we wanted to just test out and see how it did. And it did pretty good. I still see, again, I can do some tuning on the filament. First layer was pretty solid. Top layer is still, there's areas to improve. I wouldn't give this to a client. We don't provide these, but if, for me, the top layer is going to be really important. We also then ran some picture frames. Uh, we do uh, picture frames in, again, PLA and also ASA. And you can see these two picture frames. Dimensional accuracy was solid. And then also we had a really good experience with the first layer. So the actual frames turned out really nice as well. Uh, we do for a product that we work on, uh, we do uh, rulers, right? So this, these are some of the rulers that we did, alignment sticks. And you can see I have on this one, uh, kind of like the brim, didn't really need it. Uh, I turned it off for the second one. But again, for this size, it turned out well. And then also our ruler and our branding came out very clear on these as well. So I was really happy with the overall finish here. And then also the top layer, because this was printed you know, face down, came out really nice too. You'll notice that I didn't have the issues that I had with the other one, where you saw um, a matte finish, uh, a sh uh, shiny finish, and then a matte finish again. And also the layer lines were very uh, visible. Not the case with this. So happy with this as well. Uh, we have also produced uh, an ink box, and this isn't going to require a large, massive bed, but I also was happy with the overall quality here, the dimensional accuracy. Um, I don't know why uh, some of this stuff happens in the bottom. It looks like there was a leak, but there was no leak, but I noticed that. It could have been that I took it off the bed too soon and I didn't let it cool off, and I think that's what happened because you notice the sides are one color and then the, the center piece is a different color. And I do remember flexing to get it out. So that could be one of the things that I'll need to adjust. Uh, from a jig perspective, here is, we do a lot of jigs um, in our business. And here's one of the jigs. It's important that you don't have any elephant foot going on on the sides. So this is pretty flat and dimensionally accurate. And this will go into the machine without a problem. So this worked really well. And all these pieces also work well. Now the other thing, because we talked about size, we're gonna move some of these prints over to the side here. Uh, one of the things that we, we did was a first layer test. And this first layer test took into account the entire bed that you can see here, the entire bed. And I've seen better, but this is not bad, right? So this is the full first layer. Uh, you'll notice that there's some transparency. It almost looks like it's one of those uh, for, for doors if you wanna keep the mosquitoes out. You can see that, you can see straight through. And I'd like to see it tighter, right? But this came up completely and there isn't any kind of defects, deformation going on. This worked out really, really well. Uh, the only thing I'll say is if you look at right here, you can see, I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but I have really nice um, finish over here. But then as I start going to the corners and you can see maybe in some of the, the shadows, there's some wavy lines on the sides. So it's gonna require some tuning for sure. On the larger side, because we, we are looking at this for large prints, and you can see this is a very large print. Uh, this is also suffering from that shininess where I have a matte finish. We only print matte, but then because of speed and heat, I'm having some issues here. So maybe slowing this down, I can get it to be consistent. Um, I need to do some tweaking, but first layer uh, was good. And this is where you can see some of the rippling that I was telling you around the sides that I have to address. There's been firmware updates I also know coming to the printer and that's been helping somewhat. Uh, this is not a, a relatively brand new printer that was just launched, but I know that they're consistently making some updates to the printer as, um, they're, you know, as time goes on. And I wanna say since I've had it, I think when I got it, there was a firmware upgrade and then there was two more since then. All right, so now that we've gone through all the prints so you can see the overall quality of what I was getting, let's talk about the printer itself. 
Now, so first of all, this printer does support multicolored. It's one of the largest multicolor printers on the market that would fall into the consumer grade. Uh, we'll look at the multi-material solution in a couple seconds here, but basically it's going to support anywhere from four to eight colors, meaning that you can have two of their solutions, uh, their ACE uh, system that they have here, uh, their ACE boxes, you'll be able to have two of them connected and support that. There's some things that I'd like to see improved on how they implement that, but that's definitely something you can do. The actual print surface, 420, 420 by 500, and you know I love the size, we can take advantage of a lot. I think I have one other printer that is a little bit larger than this one uh, from Creality, but again, uh, this is definitely in the large size. You're going to be able to print a lot of different types of materials with this, PLA, PETG, TPU, and uh, just be aware that some of these materials that I'm talking about, specifically TPU, you will have to load it outside of the ACE system, and that's pretty common. Uh, when you think about even Bamboo uh, with their printers, they basically have um, if you're doing TPU, they have a separate entry for that. They want you to load it manually, not through the actual uh, actual box or multi-material system, as you see here. Uh, speeds, 300 millimeters to 600 millimeters per second, which is really respectable. However, I would say, at least with the profiles that they have, this printer was a little bit slower than my other printers that operate in the same speed. So things took a little bit longer. Uh, and primarily, something that added to that time was the fact that this bed is so large that it takes a long time to heat and it takes a long time to level. Uh, and again, this is all auto, but this is big. And one of the things I wish they did is that if I was only using a small portion of the bed, because let's face it, if I have this bench sheet, let me put it back on camera, and that's all I have, I'm heating up that entire bed. That's kind of crazy, right? Having to do all that for just one piece. Yeah, so having the ability to be able to just uh, heat up one specific area would have been great. And I'm gonna go ahead and put something to print while we're, while we're just going through the actual product so you can see how long it takes. Uh, so I did the long uh, benchy that you saw right here. This is a 53 minute benchy, right? So it took a little bit longer, but I don't wanna say that the, the 18 minute benchy, there was much of a difference when it came to quality. So what I'm gonna do is run this benchy and we're gonna run another one just so you can see the actual process and then we'll look at the software. Uh, but what I find is that it was a little bit slower than I'd like, and part of that had to do with the actual temperature. And there is a setting where you can speed things up, but it's a manual setting, and that's kind of a little bit disappointing. All right, so going back to the specs, what do you have? Um, in addition to that, you have a max temperature of 300 C on the nozzle. You can support four, two, six, eight nozzle tips, which is expected. Uh, but what I find is that the actual version of the anycubic slicer, which is you know the same slicer that you're using with Bamboo, Orca, but it's just a skinned version. I find that it doesn't really have enough profiles or enough uh, where you would be able to take advantage of it. So if you're gonna get this printer, I would say you're gonna wanna get your own, uh, build your own profiles, tune them and get them ready, which is what we do when we're using something in our uh, print farm. Now I can feel right now that the print bed is starting to warm up. And again, it's gonna warm everything up. Right now, the print bed is 39, and it's making its way all the way up to 70 to warm up before it goes through its leveling and does what it needs to do. Let's say, uh, let's talk about other things here. Uh, basically, you also then have a auto leveling, so you don't have to worry about anything about it. When I put it together, it does come up in pieces, so it's not something that's fully built. All I had to do is put it together, and it probably took me about a half an hour to do so. If you've never put a printer together, I would say set aside an hour to an hour and a half because you'll want to take your time and make sure everything is tightened and ready. You do have mobile support where you can use an app on your phone, or you could go through a browser, uh, or more, let me correct that. You could go through the app, and the app has an integrated kind of browser solution that you can use, or you can use the mobile solution as well. Uh, the overall dimensions, if you want to think about how much space this takes, because it takes up a lot of space, and notice I have two things here. Uh, we're talking about 706 by 640 by 753. This is a no joke when it comes to space. And that I would say is a negative for me. The fact that the Ace box that you have right here, the Ace itself, the Ace Pro, uh, takes up space and it's space that, you know, I can't mount this on top of it, 365 by 282 by 234 millimeters. So that's gonna take up some decent space. And it kind of kills me that, that I have to go ahead and do that and give that up. 
Now on the side, let's take a look at what we have over here. I'm just going to move over to the side. Here we have the ACE, and this is the same um, multi-filament solution that we've seen with other Anycubic products. What I like about this solution, and we'll move this over to the side, is that it does uh, do uh, filament heating, so it will serve as a dryer. And for the most part, it's been maintenance free. And I've been running um, another one of their products for quite some time now and haven't had any issues with it. I've been very lucky, knock on wood, that we haven't had any clogs or jams inside of their Ace Pro. But I like the fact that it does have a dryer and it also then can support all the rolls that you see here, all four, up to two Ace Pros on one unit. Now, ignore the bits of filament that you see here, because uh, we were actually using this printer a lot. But one of the things I'd like to see is better organization and management of things like this. This is a mess, and there's nothing I can do to make it less messier uh, because of how it's been implemented. As each one of these uh, filaments are being used, what will happen is this will pop out, and you'll see these coming out. So there is no... Um, there's no real tooling on this side that is pulling the filament um, towards the printer. Everything is happening here in this system right here. So you'll see you know, something come out like this, something come out like this as a switching and going through things. It does poop like every other printers, but this here is just, I don't know what else to say it or how to put it. It's just a mess. I wish there was a better way to look at this. Now, since the printer does poop, I went ahead and printed a poop tray and this is the largest poop tray I've ever printed. Look how large this is. And it kind of flings the poop because you can see the poop that's uh, connected on the wall right there. I'm going to bring it back and put it here in shot. Uh, but what you're looking to see here is again uh, the bed leveling is going to start. It does have a little silicone uh, base there that it rubs to make sure that the tip is nice and clean. But when it's going to level, and you, I could disable leveling, it's going to level again this entire bed. It's a big bed and it's going to go ahead and do that. And that is something that I'd like to see change. I did incorporate a camera, which is not part of this platform out of the box, but you can order uh, from Anycubic a little webcam or camera so that you can see what's going on on this printer. And I went ahead and did that. And it's just, again, another cable that you need to add. On the side of the printer, you do have your power switch. We'll go ahead and pan a little bit over here so you guys can see that right there. So there's your power switch and your actual plug, which I find it's unique that they're both in the same spot. I don't know if I like it or not, but it's there. Um, and it's just weird that it's actually there. So I wish that was on the back somewhere and the switch was just here. Uh, here you have, again, USB cables and then your power cable or communication cable for the Ace Pro. And then this is for the webcam. I have one extra for loading files. Now the printer is going through its leveling process and this is pretty standard, like this is what you would expect with any, you know, any kind of printer. So it's going down, it's doing the leveling, but again, because you have such a large area, it's gonna take a while to do so. Now the printer does have a little eject area right here on the side. So this is where it's gonna, you know, kick out your poop as it goes through that process. And again, the longest time, at least in my experience of this entire print process, is just leveling the entire bed. Now, on occasion, what I've been doing more and more is I have not been leveling the bed uh, because, again, obviously that it's already been leveled, so I'm doing a check every single time, and that has helped me speed things up. But warming up and then also doing the bed leveling takes time, a lot of time. Now, one of the things I'll highlight because we're right now going to kick off the print is that warming up the nozzle is pretty fast. So we're, as I'm speaking, it's at 170 and it's just zooming up from 170 all the way up to 220. Right now it's at 205. And once it hits 220, which is going to be the operating temperature, actually in this case, 230 for the initial, it will basically uh, start going. The printer is relatively quiet. This is not a loud printer at all. So while it has some clicks that it does when it's kicking filament out, and then also when you start the Ace Pro and it starts feeding, you do hear like some whirling going on. For the most part, everything else is pretty quiet. So it's already started extruding. It's gonna extrude. It's gonna kick it out to the side. All right, so it went ahead and pooped. You saw that? And that was kind of loud as it went back. You'll notice that it, it didn't leave any kind of line. It just went from dropping the poop off to printing. And outside of the shaking that it's doing, it's quiet. And the, sometimes it will whirl, especially when it's moving left to right. Right now I have it in sports mode because I just find that I want it to run a little bit faster. I wish I could default it to this. So far I have not really seen any kind of quality impact 
by running sports mode. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.